Hey, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Does yeah. that make me an overcomer? <laughs> yeah. Might overcome the world. What book are we in? Revelation. Revelation. Brother Larry, who wrote the book of Revelation? God wrote it. God wrote it down up there. Who wrote it down down here? John. John is right. We'll look at that a little more today. How many Revelations are there? One. One. One is correct. Uh, who does it belong to? Belongs to Jesus is exactly right. Uh, how many divisions in our outline? Three main divisions. What's the first division? The past. The past. What chapter goes with the past? Chapter one is correct. And what verse has this outline in it naturally? Chapter one, verse nineteen. Nineteen. Right. Okay. What's the second division? The things which are. The things which are. It's the present. It's the present. It's right now. What chapters go with the present? Two and three is right. That's the church age. We'll see a little farther when we get over there. That period of time is the church age. What's the third division? The future. The future. The future. What chapters go with the future? 4 through 22. 4 through 22 is exactly right. Now, uh, in the book of Revelation, you have more titles for the Lord Jesus than in any other single book. And you don't have to write these down. I'll try to get them typed out and hand out to you next week, similar to the handouts you have right now. In verse 1, you've got Jesus Christ. In verse 5, you've got the faithful witness. This is chapter 1. The first begotten of the dead. The prince of kings of the earth. Verse 8, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. Verse 17, the first and the last. Verse 13, the Son of Man. Chapter 2, 18, the Son of God. Chapter 3, verse 7, the keeper of David's key. One key. Then 118, we have the keeper of keys of hell and death. 5-5, five, five, we have the line of the tribe of Judah. And we have the root of David. Five, six, the slain lamb. Then let's look this one up here. It's six, sixteen, and seventeen. It's not a real title, but I've got a title here, a made up title. Who could find that? Six, sixteen, and seventeen. Who wants to read it? And he said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to? The, the wrath of the Lamb, I've got here the angry Lamb. It's not actually a title. It doesn't happen very often, but he's holding that anger back, but he's not going to be holding it back much longer. He's getting ready to turn it loose. We're looking at judgment here. Judge. Then 717. How about a lady reading this one? 717. I know that was a lady. I meant to call on a man. I forgot. Seven, seven, okay, how about the same lady? Go ahead. Hey. About the tender lamb. I put the tender lamb. It's not an official title. I just got it on the list. And then in 11.8, we have our Lord. In 12.5, we have the man child. We're talking about titles for the Lord Jesus in the book of Revelation. 15.3, we got the king of saints. In 19.11, the faithful and true. 19.13, the word of God. 19.16, king of kings and lord of lords. 22.13, beginning and the end. 22.16, the bright morning star. Yeah. Brother Matt, how about pray for us? We'll try to start on Chapter 1, going around the room one verse at a time, loud and slow, we'll try to get our mind back to where it belongs. For Revelation of Jesus Christ was not 
communicated unto him, showing to his servants things which must be come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto yeah. his servant John. <clears throat> The fair record of the Word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that reads it. Yes, amen. And keep those things which are written therein. The time is at hand. Regards to the seven churches that are in Asia, Christ Jesus sent his angel unto them which tribulation and in the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Then the angel took it and delivered it to the apostle. 
And then the apostle took it and delivered it to the seven churches. That was the steps. And not only that, right there in the middle of it, uh, let me say it one more time. Let's make sure we get this. The Father delivered it to the Son. The Son delivered it to the angel. The angel delivered, delivered it to the apostle. And the apostle delivered it to the seven churches. Right. That's the steps of victory. Not only that, right in the middle of it, he sent and signified it. That's the Lord Jesus. And signified, the root word is sign. Right. He signed it. This is the one with the authority. This is the real one to prove that the king was sent it. He sent it. He signified it. He signed it. Not only that, the whole book is as a sign. It's a sign to us. Sometimes signs are better than words because words change their meaning, but a sign just hangs right in there. Right. But either way, he signed it. He sent it. He signed it. Then uh, the promise of the message, that was the source. The promise is in uh, verse 3. There's a promise comes with this book. Blessed, happy is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. Why? Again, for the time is at hand. The reason is that the reason for the message is the time is at hand and it must shortly come to pass. Along with this uh, blessed, we have seven other. If you remember in Matthew 5, we've got the Beatitudes. It's uh, blessed are the poor in spirit. Uh, uh, blessed are this, that, and other. Well, there's some beatitudes in Revelation. Let's look at them. How about over on this side? How about 14, 13 in that first bank of pews? And then right here in this row, 16, 15. Down through here, 9, 19. And over there, 20, verse 6. We'll get some of them here. How about 14, 13? Another beatitude. Blessed. Who's God? I heard a voice from heaven saying, and you may be right. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord and transform. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from the land and their works be fallen. Blessed are they that die in the Lord. They say there's a big contrast between those that die in the Lord at the deathbed of those that die in the Lord and those that die outside the Right, right. How about uh, 1615? Blessed is what we're talking about. Happy. 1615. <laughs> Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk in the naked and see his shame. Are you watching? Are you watching? Could come back any time. Be happy if we're watching. If I'm not, if Rick's not watching, he might be saved. He might get caught. Right. About 199. Then the reason is the time is at hand 
and these things must shortly come to pass. Let's look at some verses on that over here <laughs> on the first bank. How about 2 Peter 3, 9? On it's just about time. It's just about down through here, Romans 16, 20. Down through here, Matthew 11, 25. And the on the end, Luke 8, verse 10. Luke 8, 10. How close is it? Yeah. It's close. It's all right. Yeah. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack. He's not slack, and he's coming back. How about Romans 16, 20, right down through here? The God of peace shall prove Satan, and I will be defeated shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Shortly, shortly, shortly. How about Matthew 11, 25? He's coming back. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because so revelation has he revealed to you that he's coming back shortly shortly he's wanting to about Luke 8 10 Luke 8 10 and he says to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God but to others in parables that same thing on the city He's coming back, and it's going to be shortly. The time is at hand. The recipients are the seven churches. We already said that. The theme of the message is verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now, the washing was a one-time deal. I got November 16, 1974. I got washed. Yes. Now, he wants me to clean up every day in the water of his word. Amen. But I got washed in his blood one time. Right. One time. Now, the love, this, that's continuing, perpetual. Right. It's an ongoing thing. He loved me before he saved me. That's not all. That wasn't the end of it when I got saved. It stays going on and on. He still loved me for me every day. Every day. I, he sends little gifts. Some of them got some. Some of them got some. Every day. That's a continual thing. Now that's in the past. That was redemption. The theme of the message. Now in the present, <coughs> sanctification. <coughs> Cleaned up for every day in the water of the work. Then in the future, it's glory. We're going to read about it. All the glory is here, but some of it's going to spill over on us. Right. We're going to reign with it. We're headed to glory. He gets all the glory, but he's going to see that some of us, some of it spills over with us. For example, when he leads us through heaven after the wedding, his bride when he's on, showing us all, showing us around. Let's look at it. Daniel 7, 13 and 14 over here. And over here, Matthew 24, 30. We're talking about the glory now. The glory. Daniel 7, 13 through 14. Normally in Psalms. Normally in Psalms. We see it here in verse 6. 
and hath made us kings and priests. Now in the old Bible, you could not be a king and a priest at the same time. It had to be one or the other. Same person could not be both. But it's better on this side of the cross. Everything's better on this side of the cross. And one day, he is going to make us kings and priests and we're going to rule and reign. He gets all the glory, but he's not selfish. He's going to divvy some of it out there. It's a, this is a particular praise in verse 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's look at it. We've got three more in the book here. How about uh, 411? Who wants that? Oh, I'll take it. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. How about 513? Who wants that? How about 712? Who wants that one? We're talking about glory and praise, a particular kind of praise to the Lamb. 712. He is worthy of it. Yeah. He is worthy. Okay, that's the doxology of the message. How about the location of the message? It's in verse 9. And I, John, who also am your brother, and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos. That's where the message came from. It was between, or where he received it, it was between 86 and 96 A.D. What about the time? The time of the message, verse 10. And I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. It was on Sunday. It was on Sunday when he was in. The first day of the week. Uh, you can look on the calendar and check that out. See that's Sunday or not. Then verse 10, the mode of the message. Just through a trumpet. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Right. A trumpet call. We'll see six more of them in the book as we go through there. Then the second half of the chapter, starting verse 11, we've got the Son of God. That was the servant of God, and now the Son of God. Verse 11 is his declaration. This is what he declares. He says, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in the book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. That's the declaration. Now, starting in verse 12 is his description. Now, I need you to listen real close, and I'll read the description. It's 12 through 16, and then I'm going to ask you a question. <clears throat> verse 12. I turned to see the voice which spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one, like unto the Son of Man. Now here's what he's like. This is his description. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. Girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like in the fine brass. As if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. Now, does that remind you of someone? Does it remind you of someone you know? That's exactly right. Santa Claus. That's Santa Claus right there. Well, if his voice is ho, 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 that could be Santa Claus. Now, don't misunderstand. I'm not talking about that Santa Claus was invented by man. 
around 1850. That's not what I'm talking about. It's about the same time Darwin invented evolution. Right. It's about the same time Marx invented communism. Yes. Right. It's about the same time West Cotton Port <coughs> invented a brand new group. Yeah. Yeah. It's not what I'm talking about. That's not the point. Uh, the point's not that if some man had, it, had not invented him, that the whole world would know the real meaning of Christmas. That's not the point. I do want to make the point, well, it's not even the point that his religion's been good. That's not my point. I do want to make the point, though, don't miss this, that Jesus is real. Amen. Amen. And he's the darling son of God. Amen. And he's my Savior. Amen. And I am willing to die for him. Amen. I will say. But here's the point. And, and the preacher has told us before that there's a similarity here. You did tell us. I don't know if we listened to it, but you did tell us. But here's the point. I, we don't read. You're right. We don't read. The the portrait that's in the front of a lot of churches of a long, brown, long-haired gift. Preacher, thank you. We don't have no picture. But they would be a lot closer to the truth if we had a picture like that. Somebody's not reading and studying. The enemy knows more what the Lord looks like than we do. Come on. He doesn't look like a brown, long-haired hippie. You're not going to find that in the Bible. That's the big point. Don't miss that point right there. Amen. That's not what he looks like. There's one other physical description in the Bible, and he doesn't look like that in portrait at all. I'm going to let you find where it's at. I'm going to tell you everything. But I thank you we don't have no portraits up front. If we do, let's get one of Santa Claus. It'll be closer. But I'm thankful we don't have no idols. It's the no idols. We don't read You're right. is the big point. Amen. And we don't Amen. study. You're right. We don't know what we think he looks like whatever man tells us. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Right. That's the big point. Let's look at 17 and 18. We've got his declaration, his description. How about his deliverance in 17 and 18? And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as deep. And he laid his right hand upon me. Now, uh, in the old Bible, you remember, remember the widow's son died. And Elisha <coughs> spread out. We couldn't stand it. What if the right hand laid on him? Yeah. The right yeah. hand laid on him is what happened yeah. here. Brought him back to life. We're going to have to have our new body or we won't be able to stand it. We'll die. Yeah. You can, no man can look at God and live. Right. The right hand will raise him. And when he saw, when I saw him, I fell down at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and last. I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Yeah. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Did it happen any other time? Let's see. Matthew 8, 14 and 15 over here. Matthew 9, 27 through 29, down through here. Matthew 17, 5 through 8, down through here. And then over against the wall be John 9, 6 and 7. Anyone else ever die and the Lord lay on them, touch them, and they raise up? Of course they did. Let's look at it. Matthew 8, 14 and 15. And when Jesus came and He touched you. It's a common thing, ordinary thing for the Lord Jesus. It's nothing for him. He can touch a dead body. He can do it with one hand tied behind his back. Yeah, right. It's nothing for him. It's common everyday stuff for him, raising somebody from the dead. How about in uh, 9, 27 through 29? He's in the habit of it. That's what he does. And when Jesus departed thence, two times his father was crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. When he was coming to the house, the blind men came into him. Jesus said unto them, 
Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Remember when you were in the dark? Do you remember when you saw the light? Did he touch you? How about 17, 5 through 8? Yeah. It's all it takes is one touch from him. He can do it. He's got all power. Matthew 17, 5 through 8. While he had faith to hold the right power of the shadow of the hold the boy of the power of the This is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard him, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, be not afraid. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man except Jesus saw the Touched him. Raised up. He touched John. <laughs> raised up. We're on John 9, 6, and 7 now. What was that it? When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clothes and let's get on. He anointed the eyes of the blind with the clay and said to him, Go walk to this before Salome, which is my interpretation of sin. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came sick. Touched him. Touched him. Spit, touched him with his spit. Even his spit is healing. Let's look at it over here. Right. Luke 5, 12 through 13. No, that was that bit right there, wasn't it? No, yeah. Luke 5, 12 through 13 against the wall. Right here, Luke 7, 14. And then right here, Luke 22, 50 and 51. He said, I am alive. The great I am to do this. Luke 5, 12, and 13. rest of them over here uh, Matthew 16 19 in the first bank then down through here Luke 11 52 is a key over here is a revelation uh, 3 7 and then against the wall uh, these two are the same nine, revelation 9 1 and 21 against the wall I think they're the same Matthew 16 19 the keys that Jesus has <coughs> He has the keys of heaven. He has the keys of hell and of death. What else in Luke 11, 52? Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye entered. If you want to know something, just ask him. He's got the key of knowledge. Yes. Right. Ask him. Ask him to show. Well, what's this mean? Well, just ask him. Ask him. He wants you to know he wants you to know. Now, it's not going to work too good if you put it under the pillow and try that osmosis thing. It comes up too good at night. But if you ask him, if you ask him, he'll tell you. He wants you to know. Maybe more than you want to know. Maybe. Are we on uh, Revelation 3 7 right here? He 
you get David. And one more over here. Revelation 9, 1, and 21. The fifth angel sounded, and I heard the stars fall from heaven to the earth. Him was given the key to the bottom of the field. We'll be there when the enemy is kicked in forever and forever. Is that 9, 1? Yes. How about 21? back to chapter 1, in 19 and 20. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. That's our outline, by the way. And verse 20, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in thy right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. Now here's the solution to the mystery. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. These are seven messengers Seven angel pastors, if you will, of the seven churches. That's what the uh, seven stars are. And the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. Exactly like the preacher says, the Bible interprets itself. It tells us right there what, what these are. That's the definition. That's the definition. Okay, now, a couple other things to note before next week. The, the scenes in Revelation go back and forth from earth to heaven. For instance, the first eight verses were in heaven. Then verse 9 is on the Isle of Patmos. Then 10 through 20 is in heaven. It's the glory. Chapter 2 and 3 is on earth. <coughs> Chapter 4 and 5 is in heaven. Chapter 6 is on earth. Chapter 7 is in heaven, 144,000. Chapter 8 and 9 is on earth. Chapter 10 is back in heaven with the little book. On earth was the trumpet of judgment. Then back in heaven with the little book. Chapter 11 is on earth. The first half, the last half is back in heaven with worship. On earth with the two witnesses. Chapter 12 and 13 is on earth. Chapter 14 and 15 is back in heaven. Chapter 16 is on the earth. Uh, 16 through 18. Night, the first half of 19 is back in heaven. The last half of 19 is back on earth. And then 20, 21, and 22 is back in heaven. Just something to note. There's two themes in the book. Two themes all the way through the book. It's the person of Christ and the plan of God. The purpose of Christ and the plan of God. And all we can do with those now, we're going to adore the person and accept the plan. We have to, we get to adore the person. And we have to accept the plan. I can't explain it. I can't explain it. explain why sometimes bad things happen to good people. I can't explain that. I've heard the sermon, but I tell you what, we've got to accept the plan. Right. We adore the person and accept the plan. See, the Lord knows about the past, the present, the future. It's all a lie. He reads the past, rides the present, and rules the future. I've told you about the traveling preacher, the, the riding his horse one day through the country, and the gypsy woman says, uh, cross my palm with silver, and I'll tell your future. He said, you mean if I give you money, you'll tell me what I'll be doing tomorrow or sometime next year? She said, yes. He said, I'll tell you what. You tell me what I was doing this time yesterday, and I'll cross your palm twice. I'll pay you twice as much. She said, that's okay. She's fine. She's fine. He's omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. It's all in verse 8. All in verse 8. And then he loved us. He loved us in verse 5. The missionary in Africa was walking down the path after a fire had charred the jungle. Everything was a mess. And he went through there. He saw where a mother hen was in the path and he just kicked the ashes out of the way and chicks run everywhere out of the way. 
mom and giving her life. But that's creature love. That's creature love. What about Calvary love? It goes farther than that. Loved us and, and washed us from our sins in His blood. I'm talking about love that water won't quench. I'm talking about love that will not let us go. Will not let Rick go. The suffers long, that's kind and endures. That kind of a love. That kind of a love. Also notice that John was in two places. He said he was in the aisle. And he said he was in the spirit. Every Bible believer lives in two places. Paul, the Apostle Paul, said he was in Christ and he was at Colossae. It was told about a cobbler, a shoe cobbler, that had a shop where he mended shoes and an apartment upstairs where he lived. And someone asked him about it. And he said, well, I'll work down here. I'll live up there. And that's what we're supposed to do. Dear Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for writing it down. Thank you for revealing it to us. God, help me to be faithful to work down here and live up there. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.